We have just two weeks left until Witch Queen launches on February 22nd, so for those of you who have been putting off the prep for the new DLC, it's time to get moving. Maybe you want to ready yourself for an attempt at a day one raid clear, maybe you just want to get up to max power as soon as possible, perhaps your goal is simply to race through the season pass and pick up the new go goodies that it holds as quickly as you can. Whatever your goal in prepping for the new content, this video has you covered. But first off, if you find this video helpful or enjoyable, please leave a like and subscribe for much more Destiny content as we head into the new DLC. If you have any questions about prepping which weren't covered in the video, you can head over to twitch.tv slash furrybubble where I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and I'd be happy to help you out, as will the great and welcoming community that we're building over there and in Discord. First off, we have the cleanup section. That is, finish off any seals or triumphs that you want to collect before they wave goodbye. Each of the four seasonal seals from year four of the game, Warden, Chosen, Splicer and Realmwalker, will be unobtainable once Witch Queen launches. So if you want to earn them, then make sure you run through those mission triumphs and claim them before the 22nd. The same goes for any story content attached to those four seasons as well, as everything will be headed for the content vault as year five begins. Furthermore, if you want to claim the 2021 Moments of Triumph seal, that too will be exiting stage right on the launch of Witch Queen, so it's time to finish off those last annoying triumphs that you've been putting off. Also going away are the Presage and Harbinger missions and all triumphs related to them. That means you have only two weeks remaining to get your gold roll DMT and Hawkmoon without having to pay an arm and a leg to Noodleface when he turns up with the rolls that you've spent months trying to acquire via actually playing the content. It has been confirmed by Bungie that Zer will be selling Deadman's Tail and Hawkmoon rolls as part of his rotation for people who missed out on the guns. But waiting for him to show up with the roll and then paying an Ascendant Shard, an Exotic Cypher and a bunch of Glimmer and Legendary Shards is going to feel a bit of a pinch. So I suggest diving into their respective missions and hopefully picking up the roll that you're looking for without having to pay Zer's exorbitant middleman fees. Unfortunately, DMT can only be acquired once per account per week, so there are only two chances left to get that Vorpal roll, whereas I believe, and please do correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, that Hawkmoon can be obtained once per character per week, so you have six chances left to get whatever drop you want of the Kakao gun from the time this video goes live. Also on the weapons front, if there is anything you're looking for from Season of the Hunt, Chosen, Splicer or Lost, make sure to be focusing your Umbral Engrams as the opportunity to do that will be leaving with Witch Queen. If you head to the Prismatic Recaster in the Helm and enter the menu for Season of the Lost, as well as the current season options, there are engrams for the previous three seasons which will give you a chance at some of the better weapons from those seasons. I posted a video last week about 10 weapons you should give some thought to grinding out before Witch Queen drops, so if you want to take a deeper look into what I suggest you should be focusing on, then click the link down in the description below or the card in the top right corner of the video. Finally, in terms of weapons, it is time to turn in your gunsmith materials. A recent TWAB confirmed that they will be removed from inventories on the launch of Witch Queen, so it's best to get spending them now. I've already gone through this process and got absolutely nothing worth keeping, but that is because Banshee is second only on my shitlist to Noodleface for not giving me anything worth my time. However, if you're burdened with thousands of gunsmith materials and need to turn them in, take a look at one of the many videos that the likes of Dato or Above or Astacross have done that take a look at some of the god rolls that you should be aiming for in the RNG roulette. Moving on to other types of materials, it's always good in a new DLC drop to go in with a stock of planetary mats. There are six planetary mats which will be staying around for Witch Queen. Barium Bow, Dusklight Shards, Microphasic Data Lattice, which I have taken four attempts now to not call Dato Lettuce, Helium Filaments, Spin Metal Leaves, and Glacial Stalwart. Each of these can be farmed from their respective planets at a painfully slow rate, or if you have the Legendary Shards available, then Spider sells them on a daily rotation. I'm aiming to have 2,000 of each material stocked away in my inventory. I know others in my clan want a full stack of 9,999 of each, but they are certifiably crazy. I feel like as long as you have a thousand of each you'll be in a decent spot and if you can get two thousand then great. One material you will want to get rid of is Etheric Spiral from the Tangled Shore as that location will be vaulted. Occasionally Spider will sell Glimmer for Spiral so we'll make sure to keep an eye on his inventory and turn it in when you can. Glimmer is another thing you'll want to have in good stock. Glimmer is always crucial in new content for upgrading items and such and it seems it will be one of the main currencies for weapon crafting. Currently we're capped at 250,000 Glimmer in our inventory, but there is a way to store more in your vault. There are some ships and sparrows, in particular Zavala's Authority ship and the other side sparrow, both from Season 3 in their respective collections, which can be purchased for 7,500 Glimmer and 5 Legendary Shards. 
when you dismantle them, they give you back 5,000 Glimmer, but most importantly, you get all five of your shards back. So there is a sunken cost of 2,500 Glimmer per Sparrow or ship, but it gives you a way to store beyond the 250,000 limit in your inventory, and believe me, you will burn through that 250k very, very quickly. My plan is to have 100 Sparrows stored in my vault, as well as 250k maxed in my inventory, but you could theoretically store well over a million Glimmer if you have the vault space available. And speaking of legendary shards, those two are going to be vital, so try to have a good stack of them. Now, if you spend all your time playing Destiny, you might think shards are no problem, but for some of us, they can be a bit of a struggle to keep hold of. I was fine on shards until week one of the revamp trials arrived, and then I spent them all focusing engrams for the chance of a god roll shower's wrath. There isn't a hugely efficient way to farm shards at the moment, but if you don't mind sitting in the strike playlist, you can equip the Vanguard Prosperity mod and just shard everything which comes your way. You'll also be passively earning some glimmer and a few planetary mats as well, so there are worse ways to go about it if you can put up with the tedium. Another way to farm shards is the final mission of the Forsaken campaign. It's one of the few missions with a checkpoint so you can farm the final boss who drops a guaranteed legendary item when you kill him. Once he's dead, just blow yourself up with a rocket launcher, rinse and repeat. When you run out of ammo, return to orbit, find the public event flag, rally and repeat the process all over again. With the Forsaken campaign being vaulted come Witch Queen, this method is only available for the next couple of weeks, but it is about as efficient a method as I've come across, so if you're desperately in need of shards, then I suggest giving it a go. Next, we are on to everyone's favourite prep method, Bounty Farming. For the uninitiated, the reason we Bounty Farm is for Artifact XP. Each season of Destiny comes with a new artifact which houses some of the best mods in the game. However, they are gated behind XP gains. So the faster you can earn XP, the faster you can unlock the mods. These may be especially important for those aiming for a day one raid clear. Let's face it, if there's a mod the equivalent strength of particle deconstruction in the season 16 artifact, you're going to want to have it to help you with the contest mode on day one of the new raid. Bounties in Destiny come in three flavors, weekly, daily, and repeatable. Weeklies offer the most XP at 12,000, with dailies rewarding 6,000, and repeatables 3,000. Between your quests and bounties, you have space for 63 items, I plan to fill each character up with 60 bounties, leaving 3 spaces for new season quests and the artifact. As soon as you have the artifact, join a couple of teammates and to all turn in your bounties. The reason you team up with others is because of the fire team XP boost that the season pass gives. The current season of the Lost started this at level 5 of the pass. Also make sure you've equipped the Guiding Light Ghost mod for another 10% boost. The Blinding Light 12% boost mod expires at the end of season 15 and there's no guarantee that it will be like for like replaced so Guiding Light at 10% is probably your best bet. But that setup will get you as much XP as possible and it will get you well on the road to unlocking those mods. But what bounties should you focus on? Well, get as many of the weeklies as you still can at this stage. As far as I'm aware you'll be able to claim one from the Star Horse. There are three in the inventory but you can only hold one at a time. Bannix on Europa has four but only two in any week so you have to hope that his rotation works for you. There are four weekly clan bounties for playing PvP, Gambit, Nightfall and a raid with a clan mate as well as any raid challenge bounties that you feel you can get done. The final week of the season will see Iron Banner return which brings with it another four bounties and then there are two each from Shawhan on the Cosmodrome and Eris Morn and the Lectern on the Moon. Once you've got all of these done you should be able to fill up the rest of the space with daily bounties without needing to touch repeatables. Again, it's all about maximising the XP that you can store. Make sure you avoid any seasonal bounties as they will be removed on Witch Queen's launch as will any Tangled Shore bounties. The Dreaming City bounties don't reward the same levels of XP so they are best left alone, but you should absolutely be fine with any daily bounties from Europa, the EDZ, Cosmodrome, Nessus, the Moon and Dares of Eternity. Gambit and Gunsmith bounties will be undergoing a rework, so steer clear of them, and I'm personally not going to be storing any Vanguard or Crucible bounties, as I don't want my old bounties to interfere with any potential powerful rewards and slow down my levelling before the raid. Finally, I want to touch on something that's new for prepping with Witch Queen, and that is Paraversal Halls, available to buy from the Star Horse for 7 strange coins, or at a better value via daily and weekly bounty completions. These contain a truckload of goodies which should be incredibly useful when levelling up to soft cap. When you open them up, you should get items that will give you a big bump up towards the soft cap of 1500. And if you save treasure keys as well, which will be a guaranteed weapon drop, then you can min max your leveling and be a chunk of the way towards soft cap before you even dig into the campaign. My plan is to have at least 30 of these in my inventory and to immediately pay a visit to Zer's treasure hoard, opening halls, and then using treasure keys when I need a level bump on a weapon. I believe the cap on treasure halls is 999, at least that's according to Reddit. But if you have the time to grind out 999, 
parasocial halls, then may I suggest you spend the time between now and Witch Queen's launch touching some grass. If you are planning to prep over the final two weeks of Witch Queen, then one resource you should absolutely be spending your time with is the Destiny Recipes Checklist. I've left a link in the description below, but once you've signed in with your Bungie account, it will give you a prep score out of 500. I'm currently sat at 465, I'm lacking on a couple of planetary materials, and I'm waiting to grind shards and prisms until Lake of Shadows in the final week of the season. There is also a section towards the bottom of the page with some weapon suggestions, and there's a vault cleaner if you're struggling for space. So that's all of what I'll be focusing on for my prep over the coming two weeks of the season, but if you have any questions or feel there's anything I've missed, then please let me know in the comments or head on over to my Twitch stream where I'm live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and I'll be happy to chat about it. But until next time, thanks very much for watching.